Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we'll continue our exploration of VM370. Uh, and as I said in the previous videos, a lot of what I'm going to say and also what my partner in crime here with this uh, VM series, uh, Professor René Ferland, are going to say applies almost the same to ZVM or VMESA or any other version, more, more modern version of VM370. Uh, so today we're going to look specifically on how to deal with users in uh, VM370 or ZVM. Uh, the same applies to, as, as I just said, to ZVM, just the same. Uh, in VM370, obviously, we are aware that this is a time-sharing system, and so by its, it was created to host online users, which is quite different from MVS and ZOS because in uh, MVS and and any more modern versions such as uh, OS 390 and Z, ZOS, there's really no notion of a user throughout the operating system. Yes, there are users uh, for TSO and in RACF, the access control system, but uh, at the at the very core of it, um, ZOS and MVS are not user-oriented or, or, or online or time-sharing oriented systems. TSO introduces some of that, but but VM370 was designed from the ground up to be a time-sharing system. So obviously, if you have a time-sharing system, you need to somehow be able to define and and uh, and uh, deal with users. And this is what we're going to look at today because it's an important enough subject that it needs its own. I, I believe it needs its own uh, video about it because it, it's it's it turns out that as elegant as VM370 is, and I really start to like it more and more myself. And I use it more and more, um, and also more modern versions of it. I have access to ZVM on the University of Leipzig uh, real mainframe on the real iron. But the more I like VM370, the more I play with it, I have to say the user management is one of the worst parts, as far as I can say, uh, as I can see from here for, uh, for VM370. It's cumbersome. There are some newer options to manage users more effectively. And I guess there's also a lot of third uh, party add-on products that can be bought but obviously uh, we here in the Moshix mainframe channel we don't have access to any of that and we have to work with what we have which is VM370 at best we have the six-pack download and let's look how this happens so anything that needs um, that is system configuration and system maintenance is done through the user maint m-a-i-n-t so I'm gonna do that here login as maint and I'm gonna say here what my password is. Okay, so I'm logged in, logged in now. And so the, by the way, I have here the manual, which you wanna look at, so just search for this title at BitSavers here, and you should be able to find this and many other VM370 manuals. Of course, reading the manual is always the best way to move forward when you get stuck. But if you follow here, then we'll be able to look at how things work in, uh, in when it comes to user and virtual machine definition. So as you know, in VM370, everything is a virtual machine. A virtual machine. So every user is a virtual machine. And of course, every uh, guest operating system, system such as MBS would also be a um, a, a, a virtual machine and there's also virtual machines sometimes for things like uh, some programming languages are installed on the virtual machine because then you can define a disk for that virtual machine and people can link to it in read only anyway so we're going to first start with the easiest thing which is user management itself I'll clear the screen here and i go to my drive a and i should have your yeah here it is I have six pack direct and this is um, the standard to name user directories with the file type as you see here direct and then give it a name so in six pack it comes six pack the the version of vm370 we're running here the distribution comes delivered with the six pack direct by default and this is what we're going to be playing with uh, right now i also want to say that even though we're going to play with six pack direct this is not the production file i use for maintaining users on uh, this system because this is a live system that could maybe uh, right now be some users logged on and so i don't want to give away passwords or anything but this is what it would the, the one that i use is very similar to this 
So we have a full screen uh, editor in uh, six pack, which is the amazing thing here. So once if you log in, and by the way, I'm assuming that you would down download your own six pack version and uh, and if you want to run it on your own system then this is how you manage your virtual machine and users obviously if you log on to the moshix mainframe vm370 then you don't um, you don't have access to the, the main uh, admin user and you wouldn't be able to define or uh, look at definitions for users of virtual machines so six pack direct and i like to have my prefix on the left so if I typing that I switch this to the left it's because I come from ISPF okay so um, right away you see that there is already a bunch of this pre-installed and uh, pre uh, virtual machines and as you can see here uh, very typical there is a virtual machine here called user every time you see the directive user that's the definition of a virtual machine so we have algo algo so that virtual machine is installed and it has one disk and that disk has 20 cylinders and this is the permissions multi uh, mul these are the passwords for people to access it why is there a virtual machine for user algo well algo is installed on a small mini disk with 20 cylinders and by doing it this way anytime then you have a user who needs to have access to algo the, the user would link to this mini disk and read only and therefore have access to the alcohol compiler okay so that's how this thing then is there is several other users here which have something to do with the setup of six pack itself you're not going to be concerned with that and then here there's an important user called autolog autolog is the is the virtual machine which when uh, M, M, vm370 or later on zvm comes up it would IPL this virtual machine here autolog and that in turn will then go and uh, start all other virtual machines which you want to be started such as if you had ZVM you would start uh, TCP IP you would start the performance monitor in our case we start CP watch uh, which is this thing here you can do dial, anybody can do that dial CP watch and you can see who's logged on for instance uh, we could look at uh, system resources by pressing f2 it says here when we ipl last time three days ago and lots of other stuff so uh, so as i was just showing um oops I dropped out cp watch those users uh, cms batch cp watch they're all started by autolog so when vm370 comes up it will launch autolog autolog then it will in turn launch all those virtual machines which you defined to be started which in this case is cp watch and cms batch um, so that's why this virtual machine is kind of special and important then we have the, the uh, rex virtual machine so rex is installed obviously on the six pack which is great and um, so here is the definition of a standard user. We come back to that in a little while. We're not going to look at this. Then COBOL is installed. CP Watch is this exact application we're looking on right now. Um, then we have real guest machine. So let's focus on this one. Um, so here we have a definition for DOS VSE, which is obviously the one of the other mainframe operating systems from IBM along with MBS and BM370. Uh, this actually is a more complex user definition. So we have a virtual machine called DOSVS VS with the password DOSVS. We say for each virtual machine, as you can see here, we say what is the default memory usage and up to how much can the virtual machine ask for. And then we have permissions. So user permissions are always G and virtual special virtual machines with special uh, guest operating systems can sometimes have b f and g but g is for total typical uh, users as you can see here cms users this would be just a standard online user would have performance that would have uh, permissions g and a is restricted and some others are restricted such as to the operator a virtual machine etc um, then you have you say here what is the virtual machine that 
VM370 is going to show to this guest, to this operating system. So here we're going to see, we're going to say EC mode, which is called also basic mode, meaning without uh, the, meaning the operating system will control, will think it's controlling a real machine with that real timer and virtual equals, equals real. Virtual equals real also exists in MVS. Whenever you launch a job, you could say vert equals real. And what this means is that um, the you give real memory pages, real RAM to this guest machine and not virtual memory. Uh, this sometimes is necessary for two reasons. One, because DOS VS is itself a virtual memory operating system and wants the page itself. You could give it also virtual equals reach, virtual, but then you would have double paging and that would slow down things a little bit. Plus, um, some things just require real because of the way they set up their own paging. So DOS VS here, um, in this case, needs virtual, virtual equals real. You tell it from which device to IPL, where the console is, what kind, it's a 3215, that's a scrolling, like a, like a typewriter, a teletypewriter console and the which uh, virtual address and then dedicate so dedicate what it means is that this whole device here uh, this whole device here dedicated to DOS VS so VM370 will step almost completely out of the way in the management of this device which VM370 knows about you can see it but in this case it will step away completely and it will hand over management of this device to the to this virtual machine DOS VS um, the uh, DOS VS operating system and we will show it internally as device 360. So by the way this is a great way in Hercules if you have many uh, guest operating systems which are have the same device numbering then you could just give it a different device number on the Hercules configuration file and then in the VM specification in the user directory for VM370 you give it the device that the machine needs to see. So this is a great way you mapping real device address on the right to virtual device address that the virtual machine will see here on the left. So we're doing this for one, two, three, four, five disks. And then we also link to um, uh, this uh, mini disk 190, 190E, which contains, uh, which contains some CMS tools. Special, but this is how we define 3270 uh, terminals. And then finally, we say how to spool. 00C will be a card reader, class A. 0D is a puncher, class A as well, of type 2540. And then we have the printer, 1403, also spooled. So what this means is if anything prints inside the virtual machine, inside DOS VS, it will go into the spool of VM370. And if you then define A as being printed directly in the printer, you could print through from DOS VS or any other operating system inside the virtual machine straight through to the printer. Here we have GCC, the new C compiler, it's not installed. And finally, we have this very special user here, which obviously is the user I'm logged in right now, mained with password. This is the standard password for six pack CPCMS, 15 megabytes default, EC mode, IPL CMS. So when we write IPL CMS, it means as soon as the virtual machine is started, it IPLs the CMS guest operating system, the conversational monitor system, kind of like MS-DOS or CPM automatically. If I don't put it there, I will have to type IPL CMS by myself, not a problem. And then we tell the console is a teletype writer kind of console. And then all the disks that main has access to. As you can see, it's quite a few. This is the operator console, which needs to be uh, started when BM370 starts and then we have PL1, PL, some languages RSCS1 is the remote spooling system uh, this is actually in a way the precursor of the internet was based on on this very program it's a program running as a guest machine under VM370 which enables networking of, uh, of computers and in fact for a while the biggest network on on earth was called VNet by IBM and that was controlled by um, VM370 with RSCS uh, out of Cambridge in, the, in, in Massachusetts. So, and this obviously was another very important definition, MVS. This will be MVS 3.8. 
as you can see again here we give it enough um, real memory now obviously if we start both an MBS and the DOS VS and we say vert real at some point we're going to run out of real memory we only have 16 megabytes so I doubt that we could start both MBS and DOS VS at the same time on this machine because we have only 16 megabytes yes we give it only 8 and the other one I think has even less let's see how much was for DOS VS also 8 so we're kind of tight this machine is 60 megabytes defined and that's the maximum because 60 megabytes is the 24-bit limit so we could try to start both but I guess uh, one would probably not succeed the second one and then we again all dedicating all these devices and that's it so here now I have an example of the user that how I define it um, so I give, this could be Bob something. I give it usually five megabytes of a default. I automatically IPL CMS and then console um, 009. I define this pooling devices, the reader, the puncher and the printer. And then I link to 9, 190, 19D and 19E. This contains all the interesting things such as the compilers, the games that we have, as we've seen in the previous video on this channel um, those are all contained in here and then I define here one single mini disk for this user starting and so that's a 3350 which I think has about uh, 600 cylinders um, am I right uh, 3350 how many cylinders I have to write IBM Yeah, 555 cylinders. Um, so, and here I say on this 3350 type at address 191 with volume serial user 04. So I defined in Hercules a 3350 and then make sure that VM370 can see it. And then all the users that I have on this uh, Moshix mainframe with VM370 right now reside on your user 04. When this fills up, I have a user 05 as well and the 06 um, and I give it 10 cylinders which I think is about um, it's about uh, 2 megabytes and starting from cylinder address 241 and for how many cylinders 10 cylinders so this goes from 241 to 251 and then I have multiple uh, write um, permissions and a repassword, write password, and a multi password. Now, as you can see here, what this really means is that we have to, by hand, keep track. If I have more users, like if I add another user here, right? If I say, uh, want to add another user. So now I call it user three. Um, so now I have to keep track of where the last user stopped. So I, I, that's why I write it here as a comment. Last user stopped at 251. So now I would have to start here at 252 for two, two cylinders. And then I would say here, last cylinder is 262. Okay. Now this is the way to keep track of the of this mini disks assignments you really have to you you're assigning cylinders on the disk which is kind of ancient right i mean if we think about it today in windows we just write files we don't have to think where we're going to write them or when we add a new user to linux we don't have to tell them which tracks and which blocks on the disks uh, the home directory for that user is this is what we're really doing being fair. I mean, we're telling them where on the disk physically that user is going to store her data and it's kind of antiquated but this it's it's still the way it is today in zvm uh, as well so today on the real mainframe if i access it somebody had to define where on the disk my data is going to reside physically there's obviously a little bit more modern uh, systems on zvm there's a product called dermain which is which uh, people have to pay for uh, ibm zvm dermain and dermain is 
convoluted but effective way to handle both users and their mini disk allocations and many other aspects by the way on uh, on the system so that you don't have to do all this by hand because let me tell you one thing when you have dozens of users or sometimes hundreds or thousands of users eventually you will make mistakes and you will start to have people overriding each other's data on the disk and it becomes a mess it, you're almost guaranteed to make mistakes and I already have made some mistakes so it's cumbersome to do it by hand and that's why uh, early on some third-party companies such as computer associates and others release products that will automatically manage this for people uh, also in zvm there's some panels uh, that allow like interactive panels that allow to define all that stuff and then there is um, then there's Duramaint, which is a, an interactive way for people to define users and to have their main check make sure that no users mini disks are um, overlapping each other um, but uh, if you don't have that such as in bm370 then we have to do it by hand and you have to be very very careful here not to overwrite each other's uh, uh, user entry so so then i would save it here and once you save it uh, you would do direct six pack direct now i'm not going to press that because the moment i press that i actually overriding the directory entry for the real production system um, that i have defined on the system so that i'm not going to do that that will be suicide but uh, but this is how you this is how you do it let's see if anybody's online no it's only me right now so um so you would write direct and then the name of the user directory that you use uh, six pack direct or whatever it is and then run it and if there's no errors syntax errors it will make this the new user directory and people can log in directly now once you define the user um, you also as, I, as we saw you define also the um, the uh, the mini disk then uh, professor René Ferland and I who manage the system also have a script to format those systems, uh, those mini disks for the users. Um, otherwise, the user could log in the first time and format their own mini disk, but we we just do it for them. And we have here, uh, I have here a script called add user. So I link to that new disk. I pass in argument the name of the user and the password, and then I access that disk as. Um, 591 multiple write I format it and this will ask me if I'm if I really want to format it and then it will ask me for a volume um, which I specify for the user and then we and then what I do is I copy the user profile exec to that user at Z because I mount this disk as Z as soon as it's formatted and so then I can you copy the standard user profile exec to um, to that user and then I release it. By releasing it, I kind of make the changes final. So this kind of script, which you're, of course, uh, welcome to copy, that's how we add new users. Um, this, you know, this is just a profile exec, with, you know, the retrieve, uh, which defines how, uh, what the retrieve function keys are, etc. So we copy that over and as soon as we have done that that's when i then inform the user uh you you received your vm370 account and then can they can immediately log in and um, and start using the system so um, that's really what there is to it it's not complicated in structure it's complicated in the process you need to have a a workflow that makes sure that you're not over overriding any users mini disks because they will be unhappy because they will lose all the data so that's why i always write here what is the the last cylinder of this current user so when i add a new user after this one i i still verify but i know where to start from which cylinder number i start giving the new user her mini disk um, and i keep changing of course these passwords so that they're not stand the same for everybody um, so that uh, there's a little bit of protection because otherwise people will be able to mount each other's disk and they're encouraged to do so because VM370 is a, is a time sharing and co collaboration and cooperation system so 
users are welcome to attach each other's disks and, and share data this way. Uh, so if you see here, queue disk. So this is where um, all my disks are as a main user. And, um, and when I run the user direct file by doing the direct command, it will install that and, uh, and make it visible to the system. And so immediately uses, I don't need to shut down and re-IPL VM370, obviously to add the users, that would be ridiculous. But uh, this is how this works. Now, uh, there is lots of options in the VM, in the user direct um, command uh, uh, directive for the, for adding users. And so there is a lot, a lot, a lot of this, uh, are mentioned here. And also here in the command language. So you should read this manual if you intend to have um, a, uh, if you want to start enhancing your BM370 installation and add things to it. For instance, one of the things that uh, we recently did, we, you know, the professor, Professor Renaud Ferland and myself, we added new compiler and so we added a virtual machine for that compiler so that we can have a mini disk for that user for that virtual machine and then all other users could then link in read only to that um, to that pack to that mini disk and start using the new compiler um, that's one of the uses so you should read all the all the uh, all the user directives uh, all the uh, statements you can put in, in the user directory zvm is pretty much the same. There is one new thing, which is uh, identity. So instead of defining a user, you can just base it off an existing user and give a new user a new identity off that existing user. But uh, if you know the VM370 user directory file, you will immediately understand the ZVM directory file as well. There's really little added there. Obviously, it's been updated for 31 bit and for 64 bit, so you can define. Uh, how many CPUs you can define, what kind of CPUs and what kind of architecture, but but uh, this is really um, this is really all there there is to it. If you have any questions about the user directive, please um, post some comments below this video. Uh, I know it's a somewhat uh, complicated topic when you first look at it, and it was for me just up to three, four, well maybe six months ago. I had never really played much with uh, ZVM and VM370. And then uh, suddenly I started playing with it, and now it's 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 clear. I've read a bunch of manuals. It's not that hard. But if you have questions, please do uh, write some comments below this video. If you have uh, had any successes with it, also you're welcome to post and let us know about it. And if you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. If you have not subscribed to the Moshex Mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to do so now. Thank you for watching.